you know, we have so much friggin' amazing stuff. Like, I mean, one of my artists just did a cover for, um, you know, for an upcoming comic book called Templeton, right? Check this out, you know? And so this is, and he just said, hey, I've done, I've, I was working on an art and I decided to, you know, um, let me just bring this over here so I can think it. You know, I decide to, hey, I'd love for you to use this as part of your comic book, right? As a cover. Could you do that? I said, yeah, man, let's let's use that. And so I got, you know, because there was a character, you know, it's a horror comic book, so we got this. And I get to use it. And I get to use people, show people this is what we're doing. And that is get, gains interest in the work. See, nobody's going to basically follow you and go, oh, I don't even know who you are. So, But then if you go, hey, this is what I drew. This is what I, I'm a colorist. I'm a, you know, this is what I do. People will start getting interested in you. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, it's how you deliver stuff. Like I can be quite abrasive, right? And on, especially on my own personal page on Facebook, I can be quite abrasive because usually I'm trying to troll or whatever because I'm trying to have a laugh. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to be all around it. I don't want to just show people, hey, this is what, this this is all you see me in. I want to show you that there's, you know, more than just this guy who does comic books. Because I write all types of stories. I don't want people to say, oh, he's just a com he's a guy who just writes uh, uh, superhero comics, right? But we also do like freaking hardcore horror comics. And so I don't want people to just say, oh, well, I thought you were just doing that. I don't like your stuff because you're doing this now. That, the only way you're going to show people more, about, you know, um, get people to understand who you are and build interest in that is tell people what you're doing. Because I think that it's really tough right now uh, because there's so much out there, right? Last, last time we did a live stream, we talked about the, the stresses of AI and, and people paying, you know, um, over, you know, overseas people, like Western people expecting to, uh, to get like $60 a page or $100 a page, $200, $400 a page, when somebody over in the Philippines can do it for 20 bucks. So rather than saying, oh, you, you know, oh, I won't do that for that. It's like, you don't have to argue with that guy. Just go move on, right? Just leave that guy because there's other people that will. And I want, you know, there's something that, like, I really want you guys to understand when it comes to this whole idea of comic books and the whole indie comic scene is that there is a hundred other people willing to do the work you're not willing to do. But if you start jumping down people's throats about some sort of pay rate, page rate, those guys will basically, not only will you put them off what they're doing, and that's not something you ever want to do, is turn people away from being creative. They'll, they might actually turn up to do friggin' AI stuff. And that's my worst thing. My, my, like my fear is that there's more AI rubbish out there, right? Because that's not actually art. That's actually, uh, it's like stolen valor, right? It's like being an artist saying, I went, uh, sorry, like, it's like being a soldier. This is what I look like to, right? Let me get this right. It's like being a soldier and um, going to war. And saying that you're a hero and saved your people, you saved a whole bunch of people, and then coming back and telling them everybody that you did, and then you find out that you didn't. That's AI to me in comics, right? It's like it's stolen valor. That's not even your work. You just put in some things, and it's now, you know. And the worst thing is seeing amazing work done by other artists, and someone is now taking that work and is getting sold as a comic book for 7K US. And here I am spending two years with my friends creating an amazing comic book by hand, right? A team of three, colorist, writer, uh, designer, uh, and inker, penciler, or sometimes another inker. And somebody's giving that trash 7K because it just looks nice because it's not even their work. It's all AI. It's a regurgitated crap, right? It's vomit, you know, but that vomit looks nice because it's everybody else's work. And so the idea is that if you're going to, I, because people just, it's like people buying cheap stuff, right? They don't realize it's cheap because it's rubbish. It's like same with art. art. It's like, it's, they will pay, like I saw like 20K US on an AI created comic book. 
yet we've got three people creating an amazing 44 page comic book that you can't even get a grand on right that people you know who have like spent years you know if not decades honing their skills and i'm not talking about myself right even though that's what i've done right as a writer but as an, an artist, but like my my artists themselves and colorists, that they've spent all the skills, yet people will spend like that much money just on a AI stuff. It's sad to me, but that is where we're at right now. We're here at a stage where it's just whatever looks good, where where people are willing to pay for, because at the end of the day, people don't really they've gotten um, used to the idea of. If it looks good, then I'm willing to pay. Not about whether, hey, was it created by someone with skill? Uh, was it created by someone who actually studied and knows what each thing is, or why it's there? Because at the end of the day, when when I'm on a page and I'm looking at it, and I'm putting like every word I'm using is chosen carefully, or edited down to make sure that there's some you know there's a, there's a purpose to that. Same with the artist. The reason they're putting those characters there in the background, the foreground, on the side, behind the buildings of that way, there's a reason behind all those, all those, you know, there's a reason behind why those things are the way they are on that page. Uh, you know, and then you also have editors, right, who will tell you, like, hey, this, is, this isn't working or that's not working. This is what, you know, the reader's going to look at. And so, you know, back to, you know, like, get, raising the following, everybody's busy. You know, uh, life, life, you know, can be stressful, busy and stuff uh, or just things. And you all you want to do is get your head down and work. However, somebody's going to be out there and Mike and, you know, in our case, it's me, you know, saying, hey, we're doing this. We're doing that. Uh, come and check out our work because I have, you know, I have people who rely upon us, uh, upon me to make sure whatever we're doing with our Kickstarters, or their Indiegogo, you know, upcoming projects, or the projects we're working on is successful. But at the end of the day, we're contending with AI rubbish, right? And I know I'm not trying to hate on that, but we should hate on that, really, to be honest, because it's not their work. It's they're using work that isn't theirs to send out. I mean, like, it's not, you've got someone here with, you know, with this beautiful work, yeah, you know, by Eva Kim Hagstrom, right, from Sweden, right? an artist who's you know who's spent years learning and dedicated to his art form and now he's you know just hey i've got this piece would you like to use it as a cover and i'm like sure right and and then he's got his own projects that he's working with me one right like we've got a project coming up um that we've been working on let me see where are we uh pop that up you know we've got um let me get rid of that one. You know, we're working on this one here called um, that's his, you know, his his book, right? It's called um, Zolandia. So we, had, um, I had um, it would come do some headshots, you know, just so we can show you guys, you know, show people always it's kind of like promotion work because we're going to be putting out like these um, this work here on a website, right? So we can have them as like these are the characters for a little bio on our website for Zoolandia, you know, and then you've got all this amazing work on, you know, like 30 pages of artwork, right, hand drawn, right, and then uh, then scanned and then taken to a digital link and then inked, you know, again by hand, you know, on, um, let me just pop it up here. So bring that up. So you can see this page. So, like I said, like I mean, this nothing beats a human creating a piece of work. AI, you know, and I'm graphic does you know graphic uh, digital artist. This has got nothing, not you know anything to do with that. Like I said, he's inking, and I'm using a uh, you know I'm using a um, a software to do all my lettering and stuff, and he's using it to ink right. But these are all hand drawn. You know, these are whole hand-drawn characters. And, you know, you get to see this great, uh, there's so much emotion to hand-drawn drawn work compared to just an AI thing, right? It's just, just there's this value uh, in, 
I think this is well, for me. I, I call it emotion, right? This 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 is connection to the um, to what's going on the page. Like you look at the you look at that kid's eyes, right? Let me just pop there. So look at the kid's eyes, right? The little boy's eyes, just the way his mouth is. You know, even though he's like really tiny on the you know not really tiny, but you know pretty small on the page. You know, you've got so much going on, right? And you've got this one here, you know, and they're all different. They're not, you know, you got someone in the back reading, you know, you got a girl with a, you know, back to front cap on, you know. It's just, there's so much, uh, you know, there's so much connection to the work because you've, you're seeing it done by a human. It's not something that, I mean, you know, maybe in 10, 20 years down the line or whatever. Uh, you know, AI can do that, you know, but there is that whole, um, you know, and, and saying that I'm a huge anime fan, right? And anime uh, and cartoons can be um, without, without the human voice, right? Without the human, uh, in, uh, I think they call it intellation inter inter or whatever it is, like the nuance of the way it's spoken and sent to you, uh, uh, you know, that you hear and uh, the way the words are pronounced. There's so much emotion in that. Like I, I get so, you know, sometimes I get really uh, you know, emotional over watching um, these, uh, you know, anime or cartoons, but mainly anime nowadays because there's so much more sort of like um, deeper conversations that has, that's have, happening in anime than is and happening in like western uh, cartoons or, or animation right because it's more about like humor it's all about action whereas if you look at anime or manga especially because they work over 12 volumes of uh, you know work rather than like quickly doing it in six issues or four issues which is the way you know comic story arcs work they're able to really build upon a series right this is why people watch you know tv shows or bench shows right and um and i'm one of those right you know and you just sit there and watch and you watch it through and you build a connection to the character because you're watching them grow or their relationships and then even if you just watch like without um any voices sometimes you can think it but it's the voice it's the human uh thing um emotion uh element that makes that work come to life right and that's what i think with with the comics you will notice that a lot of time uh if you don't have that people forget the story you watch that with movies if you don't have that human connection story you know that uh that emotional connection to work it could be like a blockbuster and nobody would care like you can make a million dollars, nobody cared. Like me, like I watched Joker the first time that was it. I never watched it again. All right? It was just. But Logan, you know, I thought I've watched Logan twice. You know, if I can remember, and like, because there was something in there that connected me to it, right? Because those are characters I grew up with. Joker, you know, Joker's Joker, but and that's how you know. I think for me, I always want to write and create characters that uh that draw you into that person's you know that character's life they connect you to that and i think um i hope i'm doing that with my work right that is my whole that's my whole friggin' aim is that like i can somehow write these characters and connect with you as a reader because we've got like six seven books on on the way or you know on and off working on uh, and so I don't want any of them to like sort of like be one of the a forgettable work, right? Uh, because I, I'm like anybody else, like an artist, like a, like an illustrator. I just want to be like, you know, I want to be able to make great work for my, for myself. I want to be able to, and for my team, I want to be able to do a work that people will remember, not just oh yeah, it's another book I can just put on my shelf. I have many of those, right? Cook it down, be well, and catch you later.